Welcome back. Today I'm continuing the process to convert my 1981 DeLorean into an electric vehicle. In the last episode, I removed the engine, transmission, and fuel tank out of the DeLorean, and this episode is going to cover the process to find and purchase this 2019 Chevy Bolt that's going to be used as the donor vehicle. To catch you up quickly, I'm taking the entire drivetrain out of the Bolt, the electric motor, the inverter, the charger, the batteries, everything, and swapping them over into the DeLorean. This is Project Lightning. Long before this video series started, as far back as June of 2020, I decided to use the Chevy Bolt as my donor, and I started looking around for one. My search parameters were any Bolt from any year with DC fast charging, preferably an LT model. The reason I wanted an LT is because the Premier model has features like the 360 view cameras that I won't be able to move over anyway, so it'll save me the time of figuring out how to disable it. Since the beginning, I always expected to buy a salvage vehicle just to save some money, but I was open to a used one. After all, that would mean I would have complete confidence that it was running and driving and there weren't any serious issues and I could go inspect it and test drive it before buying. It would potentially save me a lot of time having to troubleshoot problems, and I might be able to sell more parts from it to make up the price difference. So let's start off with where I went to look for a used car and talk about some of the finances there. I hit up the usual sites online, Auto Trader, True Car, and CarMax. I'm sure there's a dozen others. I also used Auto Tempest. This is a site that scrubs other sites on the internet looking for new and used cars for sale. It ties into Craigslist, eBay, Carvana, and others. I set up a search on a couple of these sites, saved them, and then checked them every few days to look for new listings. The other place I tried was Facebook Marketplace. This is great for finding cars in your local area that might not have made it up to the bigger sites yet. It's also great for finding a private seller. Unfortunately, in my searching, I never once found a local Bolt for sale that wasn't through a dealer, but I tried. A little tip when searching for a car, make sure you set a minimum price. I usually do a thousand bucks because tons of dealerships will list the car's monthly cost rather than the full purchase price of the car. So this filters those out. One thing to keep in mind, is that during 2021, when I was buying the donor, the car market did a weird thing. The new cars were selling with MSRPs marked up. Used prices went through the roof. I went from finding 2017 bolts as low as 13,000 in late 2020 to finding them at 17,000 in early to mid 2021. When thinking about the price here, do keep in mind that in addition to whatever you actually pay for the car, there are additional costs on top. You'll have to pay sales tax, uh, costs to transfer the title, and registration fees. In my area, that's all about 10%. You'll also need to get it transported. Uh, I usually figure a dollar per mile, but if it's close enough, you might be able to go there and drive it back. If you buy from a dealer, there are also usually documentation fees and stuff added on that could be a couple hundred dollars. On the flip side, you might be able to haggle a lower price than what's listed. In addition to using those places for used cars, I also used the two main auction sites to find salvage vehicles. What's a salvage vehicle? Well, it's a vehicle that has been wrecked or damaged beyond what an insurance provider would pay to repair it. So the insurance provider pays out the owner and takes the wrecked vehicle from them and sells it at auction to make up as much of the cost as they can. The main site I used is Copart. This is a vehicle auction site. They do live and online auctions, which are mostly salvage vehicles, but during the shutdown, they were selling clean title vehicles as well. The other site is IAAI. This is another vehicle auction site used almost exclusively by insurance providers to sell vehicles that have been totaled out. 
Buying a salvage vehicle is a completely different animal compared to buying used. For one, the true condition of the vehicle is almost completely unknown. You get a handful of pictures, some basic information about the vehicle like its primary damage type, usually whether it runs and drives, whether it has keys, and who is selling it. I strongly recommend if you're buying salvage that you try to buy only from insurance providers. Sometimes cars can be bought at auction, have parts removed, and then put back up and you have no idea that the stuff you want has already been taken out. It's also potentially a sign that someone bought the car, realized it had a lot of hidden damage, and is now passing it along. This is my first time trying to find a salvage vehicle, so I tried to pay very close attention to all of the information they give. In my case, I'm requiring that the car has DC fast charging, which is an available option on the LT. Since that information isn't listed, I have to carefully check each listing to see if it has the power cable under the hood for it. You have very little to go on, and most of the time you're not going to be able to go and check out the car in person before you bid. There are inspection services available. If you get the inspection done and find something you don't like, that might save you a lot of hassle, but it's also not a guarantee that you're going to win the auction. I haven't been able to find people who have used inspection services with good results, and they aren't free, so I skipped it. Speaking of cost, let's talk about how pricing works with these auction sites. I'm going to assume you're a regular person like me and not running a business with a license to handle salvage vehicles. Just a heads up, it isn't simple, and there are tons of caveats. And at this point, I'd like to invite you, if you're of legal age, and if you responsibly drink, to join me with a glass of whiskey. Trust me. The first thing you might have to do is sign up for an account and get a membership with the site to be able to bid, and that isn't free. Copart charges $59 annually for a basic membership, plus you have to make a deposit to bid, which is 10% of your max bid. If you want to bid $20,000 on a car, you have to make a $2,000 deposit first. The deposit is fully refundable, but does not count towards any purchases. You can optionally buy a Premier membership for $199 and a $400 deposit, and that allows you to bid up to $100,000. Over on IAAI, they also require a membership to bid, which costs $200 annually. However, they don't require any deposit to bid. With that information, you might be misled into believing that once you sign up for a membership, you're good to go and can bid on cars. Well, nope, sorry. As it turns out, most states have legal requirements that do not allow the general public to purchase vehicles from these auction sites. If I want to buy it from California, for example, I can't do it as an individual. Uh, that's unfortunate, since most electric vehicles in the U.S. are sold in California, and thus crash in California. So I'm ineligible to bid on most EVs that show up. But there is an exception. It's called a broker. A broker is a company set up to act as a middleman between the salvage auction site and you. They are licensed to buy salvage cars, so you pay them to buy it from auction and to resell the car to you. These broker sites sound great. You get to completely ignore the membership fees from Copart and IAAI because you're not the one bidding, and you get to bid on any car on the site. But there's some downsides. Instead of paying the auction site for a membership, now you're paying your broker for a membership. And they are just as expensive, if not more. And unlike the auction sites, these places seem to be a little more reserved with letting you know their costs up front. Auto Bid Master, one that I've seen advertised, charges between 3% and 10% of the purchase price, depending on your membership level. If you buy a $10,000 car, you're either paying them $1,000 or paying $350 for a premium membership and then $300 for the auction fee. Go to Auctions Now, a similar site, charges $100 to sign up seems reasonable, but also charges between $145 and $175. Then they charge title transfer fees, title processing fees, title shipping fees, 
and you're the one paying the cost to actually send them the money through wire transfer or PayPal or whatever, which could be 3%, they also require a deposit to bid that is basically 10%. Okay, so let's say you've either decided on a broker or you've found a vehicle in a state that allows you to bid directly on it. If you win an auction for $10,000, do you just pay that and you're good? No, not at all. In addition to paying the winning bid amount, the auction site is going to charge you a fee based on the price that you bought. At Copart, a $10,000 winning bid would mean an $800 or $1,050 fee, depending on whether you pay with a secured method like a wire transfer or a money order or anything else. If you pay with a wire transfer, you'll be charged a fee for that too, but it will almost certainly be less than the difference in the bidding fee. So take my advice and do that because I messed up and paid the higher fee. Uh, IAAI would also charge $800 uh, either way. You'll also be charged some other fees. Both sites charge a $59 gate fee or service fee. This is applied to all purchases. Both sites will also have a virtual bid fee, which can be as high as $129. Then, unless you're able to get the vehicle picked up within three days, you'll probably also have storage fees. Those can run as high as $50 a day. Uh, beware, I purchased the car a few days before 4th of July weekend, and even while the branch was closed, I still had to pay storage fees on those days. And uh, by the way, if you go through a broker, you still have to pay all of these fees as well. This whole system can get really complicated. Let's say you go through a broker to bid on a vehicle on IAAI, but you don't get it. Then another comes up on Copart. You might have to pay a different broker to be able to bid on it and put down another deposit. If you find a car that's listed from a state that you can buy from directly, you might be better off signing up for Copart for that option, but you've basically thrown away the membership fees that you paid to your broker. Is that it? Is that all the fees? Please tell me it is. No, no, it isn't. You've now purchased your car. You paid the price for the car and a membership and bidding fees and gate fees and virtual bid fees and everything else. What more could there be? Well, you own the car, but it's currently sitting on some lot somewhere hundreds or thousands of miles away. Now you need to pay someone to go pick it up and bring it to you. These are transport fees. You can find online places like Uship who will find you a transportation company. They'll quote you to pick up the car from the lot and bring it to you or close to you for roughly $1 per mile. However, they are probably going to bring it on a huge car hauler. And for them, it's handy if the cars can run and drive so they can move it out of the way to unload or load other vehicles. So they generally charge a bit more if the car isn't running and driving to account for needing a forklift to move them and the time it takes to do that. If your car is running and driving, then great. You're gonna have them get to within a mile or two of your location, maybe closer if you have space nearby for a car hauler and you'll meet them and drive the car home. If the car is not running and driving, then you might need to hire someone to help unload the car and transport it those last couple of miles and then drop it where you need it. I found a local tow truck driver with a flatbed that tilts and has a winch. He pulled the car from the car hauler onto the flatbed and then dropped it right into my shop. Whew. Okay, that's a lot. But let's go ahead and talk about the specifics of my situation. How much I paid for each of the steps and how I did it. This was my third attempt to purchase a bolt from Copart. The other two attempts went beyond my maximum bid during the live auction before I even had a chance to bid. The car I chose is a 2019 Chevrolet Bolt listed on Copart with 83,000 miles. The auction was listed in Georgia, which does allow me to bid as an individual without needing a broker. The car had no front end damage, a clear picture under the hood showed the DC fast charging option. It was listed as having keys available and the information screen was lit up and showing the battery range, which is a great sign, but it was not listed as running and driving. The car does have a serious 
rear end damage. Careful inspection of the pictures appeared to show that the damage didn't affect the battery, but it's always a gamble. I purchased a basic membership from Copart for $59 and paid a $1,500 deposit. I noted the time of the live auction, which was a few days in the future. At that time, I logged in and had to wait about an hour before the bolt came up, and then I sat in silence until other bidders had slowed down, and then I made a few bids until so the final price came to $8,900, and I was the winner. The buyer's fee was $1,025, virtual bid fee of $129, gate fee of $59, and sales tax of $698.88, leaving me with a total co-part price of $10,811.88. There was an additional $100 in storage fees because I wasn't able to get someone to pick up the car for about a week. Uh, transportation of the vehicle was provided by SGT Auto Transport, who charged $2,099 to transport the vehicle from Southern Atlanta, Georgia, Copart facility to Ellensburg, Washington, 2,549 miles. I then paid a local tow truck driver $160 to transport the vehicle the last few miles and drop it off right inside my shop. Finally, I feel I should mention at this point, there are still a couple of fees that you might need to pay. And that is the price to transfer the title into your name and potentially register it if you wanna be able to drive it on the street. In Washington state where I live, they don't have salvage titles, so I can't get a title in my name. And clearly the car is not drivable, so no fees for me, yay. That brings the total price for the donor vehicle to $13,229.88. This is a significant savings over buying a used vehicle, around $8,000. As of right now, the cheapest listed 2019 Chevy Bolt on Auto Tempest is $18,000, which also happens to be located in Georgia. So after paying taxes and transportation fees, it would likely be around $22,000. I think that I got an amazing deal on the donor, but only if I'm able to get it up and running without spending a lot. If you think this seems like a fun project, you won't want to miss out on the next episode where we get this donor vehicle running and driving. So please, show me you want to see more and give me your support by subscribing. This is Project Lightning.